Hello and welcome to another episode of What Travis Says. My name is Travis and I know I don't have a background just yet, but let's talk about Doctor Who. More specifically, the premiere episode of Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor, The Woman Who Fell to Earth. In this episode, we have a new Doctor, new companions, a new homemade Sonic. It's very post-regeneration, but the Doctor needs to help people, so try as she might, she needs to piece things together while also trying to figure herself out. I think it goes without saying, but if you've not yet watched The Woman Who Fell to Earth, do not watch this video any farther because I will be talking about spoilers. All right, so one of the first things you realize about the episode, besides the fact that there's no real introduction credit crawl, is that we don't really see the Doctor for more than nine minutes. The first nine minutes of the episode without the Doctor at all. Which, compared to Tennant's debut, at least Jodie Whittaker didn't spend most of her first episode asleep. But like any regeneration, we don't really get to know the Doctor straight away right off the bat. Doctor number six was violent at first. Doctor number 12 didn't even know if he was a good man for the first few episodes of his arc. And we don't get any sort of explanation on how the Doctor survived her fall, but maybe that will be established in a later episode, hopefully. And halfway through this episode, I kept forgetting that it was a premiere episode, that it was the first episode of this first Doctor of this first season, which is kind of good, I guess, because it felt like a natural episode and not a grand entrance or anything spectacular, but also it was a premiere episode and it didn't feel like anything spectacular. You know what I mean? The first episode after a regeneration isn't always amazing. Sometimes there are some really great one-liners, but that's about it. Sorry, that's the Lion King, and this is a fighting hand, and Matt Smith ended up being the best part of Capaldi's first episode. Speaking of Matt Smith, though, his premiere episode, The Eleventh Hour, is amazing. It's one of my favorite episodes ever of The Eleventh Doctor. I did enjoy how the plot of this episode wasn't entirely obvious from the beginning. We were learning about things along with the Doctor while she was learning about herself, the villain, the characters around her, she was learning, and we, the audience, were learning uh, along with her. Except at the end when the Doctor came out on top because she had figured everything out. There was a definite cinematic feel to this episode, which we talked about a few weeks ago. That's what Chibnall was going for. Chibnall was going for a more cinematic filming experience, and it really shows with these cinematic wide shots and these choice angles of the characters. And there were solid introductions to each companion. Their connections make sense, their backstories don't feel forced. Though I will say that early in the episode I figured there was like a 90% chance that Grace was going to die by the end of the episode because I already knew that she wasn't going to be in the season. The other 10% was that Graham was just going to be like, hey I'm going to go pop around the universe with Ryan for a bit, but they were so in love that I knew that he wasn't just going to up and leave her to travel space and time. So yeah, she was kind of marked to die, but at least she did it in a heroic way and her death wasn't used as just a simple plot device for this one episode. I feel like the woman who fell to Earth found a balance between an unknown threat and being foggy from her generation. Because to be honest, I'm not really a fan of the villain. He was kind of creepy and it made my skin crawl with the whole teeth in the face thing, but I knew that he was not going to be a classic Doctor Who villain. Though oddly enough, he kind of works with this specific episode because of the mystery around what's going on because of the Doctor's regeneration. The unknowing Doctor not yet done cooking vibe made the threat seem a little more threatening. If this guy was a villain in the middle of a season, he would not have worked at all. The companions all seem pretty likable, and their interactions should be interesting given the many situations that they are about to be put in. Graham is a cautious voice of reason who wants to make sure that people are okay. He knows that he's on borrowed time. He believes that he was already supposed to die, and he just wants to be very, very careful. But he just met the doctor, someone he literally saw running towards danger, so... Uh, we'll see how that goes. Ryan is attempting to overcome his limitations, but he just met the doctor, somebody who is probably the best person in the entire universe to help him with that. Yaz is clear-headed, she wants more from life, she wants a chance to prove herself, and she just met the doctor, so... Which leaves Jodie Whittaker as the doctor, and Jodie Whittaker truly is the doctor. In her very first scene, after crashing from the sky, she is jumping at the chance 
to help the people around her. She doesn't know who she is or what her personality is like because she is still cooking, but she knows that she will always, always, always help people in need. And her doctor has definite parallels to Matt Smith's doctor and David Tennant's doctor, the quirkiness of Matt Smith and the lines of David Tennant, which, uh, by the way, could we have more of those? Because they are fantastic. An early review of the episode that we had talked about said that her final speech could have been delivered by any of her previous regenerations, and I completely agree. And it does seem like a pretty easy jumping on point for viewers, for new people who are watching Doctor Who for the very first time, just like Chibnall wanted. We're going along with the companions, learning about the Doctor for the very first time with the limited, 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 limited information that we have to go on. Two heartbeats, she used to be a Scotsman, what's a TARDIS? The main shift I did notice for the episode, besides the fact that it is a post-regeneration episode, is that tonally, this episode is very, very dark. When you think about it, there are a good number of deaths in this episode. The premiere episode for a doctor and a lot of people die. There's even a funeral. And speaking of that, I would be surprised if Grace's death didn't weigh on Graham and help mold him into the hero that he is destined to become probably. But deaths aside, there were some other pretty heavy moments in the episode. Ryan frustratingly trying to ride a bike and constantly failing over and over and over. Graham mentioning that he was in remission and not specifically cancer free. Ryan's father not showing up for his own mother's funeral? That sort of stuff makes me wonder if Graham's health will be at risk in future episodes, or if Ryan will have the chance to confront his father and his father's demons. This this episode was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but for what it was, it did a lot of positive work in laying the foundation for the series to come. The series has gone through a lot of new changes, on top of the fact that this episode needed to introduce and moderately flesh out a handful of major characters, needed to realize a doctor, she had to build a Sonic from scratch, and then fight off this brand new alien threat that we have never seen before. So when you sit back and think about it, that is a lot happening in a one hour premiere episode, which maybe that's why it wasn't some grand fantastic gesture, because it was working on laying a structured foundation for episodes to come. In the comments down below, let me know your initial thoughts on this very first episode, The Woman Who Fell to Earth. Let me know what you think of Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, The Companions, how did she survive the fall to Earth? Do you think that's gonna be explained? I really hope that's gonna be explained. But as always, my name is Travis. Thank you for listening to what I have to say, and you will see me soon.